Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are two retired New York City police detectives, and if you like all things true crime related from the police detective's perspective, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so you'll get all things Duty Ron and this guy over here, Ed Wallace, when we go live or upload another video. Hey, tonight we have two great guests, Twyla Cisco and Dave Rader, EquiSearch Midwest uh, search group. They are here with us. Dave Raider's the director. Twyla is the search coordinator, drone operator, um, drone team uh, extraordinaire. She does it all, Twyla. Um, Ed, I wanted to just quickly, before we get into it, say hello to you and welcome. Uh, we always love when you're here with us on a Sunday, especially. It's a treat. How's everything going in your world, Ed? Oh, I'm just taking it easy now. Just uh, uh, slowing down. Um about to go on vacation and just relax. Outstanding. Outstanding. Hey, listen, Summer Wells, you and I have covered it extensively. We've had numerous experts in the drone departments, uh, search with search and rescue with Dave and Twyla. We had uh, experts from the canine field. Uh, heck, we even had Dan Ribikoff from um, he, he, he's a uh, expert in the polygraph field and we had him do an analysis on the statements that were made by Candace and Don Wells early on summer Wells, June 15th of 2021 reported missing from her home in the beach Creek community of Tennessee, just vanished out of nowhere. And, and, and by all accounts, her mother and her father, Don and Candace, she describes that she went in the house, she went to her mother's uh, trailer on the property, and she came back, she was gone. She just disappeared. Unbelievable, Ed, here we are two years and two weeks later. It's now June, uh, July, and, and we have nothing. We, we don't have any sign, there's no updates, there's no hope for, uh, I mean, we always hold on to hope, but there's nothing coming from TBI. There's nothing coming from the FBI. We know FBI always keeps silent. Nothing coming from Ronnie Hawkins and John Pruitt, the detective who's on this case. There's nothing new. Any thoughts on that, Ed? And just because, remember, let's not get lulled into that. Now, just because we haven't heard anything doesn't mean nothing is happening. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'd like to hear something, but, you know, sometimes... You know, you have to play your cards close to the vest, as was the case in many of uh, high profile cases, uh, even to the case uh, um, from the uh, Utah case. Right. OK, you know, so they held their cards close to the vest and then they dropped the bomb on us when when they had all the goods. So let's just pray and hope that they're still out there working the case and um, we'll get some conclusion. There you go. Uh, I mean, I always, again, in that statement I put on there, we have to hold on to hope, right? It just seems like um, not even a uh, not even a sliver of an update. When the June 15th, uh, I don't even like to call it an anniversary, but the marker for the two-year time frame, uh, TBI put out a statement, Hawkins County Sheriff put out statements, a couple of news outlets did some updates. I'm going to play a small little clip before we bring Dave and Twyla in uh, with us. Something from News Nation. This gives you a, a little bit of an overview of this case. And I, I wanted to play this the sheriff declined. only because um, I think that they did a good job in covering, in the you know, case. from beginning to end what happened here. I just got to rewind it because we were just listening to it. Um, so we're going to hear from uh, News Nation. We're going to take a listen to this and then we'll We'll be joined with our guests, Dave and Twyla from EquiSearch. From across the country, and today we have an update to a case we have covered before that has gripped the attention of people from all over the world. Today marks two years Karen. since a little girl in Tennessee vanished from her rural home. Her name is Summer Wells, and what you're seeing here is a brand new age progression photo from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. This is what Summer may look like today. She'd be seven years old. She was five when she disappeared. All of the attention on Summer's case has led to dead-end tips for investigators, even harassment towards her parents. Now law enforcement are tight-lipped about what they know about the case. Summer's father sat down with News Nation to keep his daughter's case in the headlines. 
This is Summer Wells. The five-year-old lived at this house in Rogersville, Tennessee, a tight-knit community of less than 5,000 people. On June 15, 2021, her parents say Summer was helping plant flowers with her mom and grandmother. She wanted to go into the house. My wife watched her go into the door, and she went into the house, and the boys were on the internet, of course. She wanted to go downstairs and play with her boys. I yelled downstairs for her a couple times, and they didn't get no answer, which was unusual. And so I went down there to check, and she was nowhere in sight. Two years after her parents, Don and Candace Wells, gave those accounts, that's still all we know about the last time Summer was seen. Almost immediately, Summer's parents became the center of a police investigation. Summer's parents, Candace and Don, had something to do with this, or have you ruled that out? We haven't ruled anything out. Everything's possible. Could she have gotten herself into a situation where she, it wasn't her fault, but no. You know what I mean? No, she was, uh, she's a good mother. She, um, she loves her children. She's not going to allow any situation like that. The biggest make she, mistake she might have made is maybe choosing some wrong friends, which is, you know, it happens. Don Wells pleaded guilty to driving under the influence last year. Candace also filed an order of protection against him, but asked for it to be dismissed. He now faces criminal charges in three states, including a domestic assault arrest in 2020. Two years later, investigators have not charged either Don or his wife in connection to Summer's disappearance. Everybody makes mistakes and we all have to learn and go on. We're doing better. So it's still very rough for my wife. Don Wells sat down with News Nation to talk about where the case stands today. His wife hasn't sat down for an interview since this appearance on Dr. Phil in 2021, where she walked out of an interview in Texas. No. I'm being interrogated again, and I don't want to do this anymore. Yes, I am. We'll, we'll stop. You just, I want you to feel comfortable. Since Summer's disappearance, Don says their life has been consumed by harassment from people online. I want to stop it there. And, you know, we know what the rest of this entails. Um, you know, Don Wells, uh, you know, again, talking about uh, CPS taking his his children, his boys away from him. Um, you know, we have to, our thoughts and our opinions on that as law enforcement professionals. You know, I have to say to the people who are lay folks who are just watching this from the outside looking in, you know, law enforcement has to look at this, the totality of everything that's happened here. And it, it, I don't think in good faith they could let them have their children back when they haven't explained what happened to one of their, their five-year-old daughter. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Ed. You're uh, the judge. I'm sorry. You okay. muted me. Yeah, as a carer. Okay. Uh, yeah. The you'd have to get a judge to to sign off on this anyhow. Okay. Right. Um, and I don't think at this point in time, um, they've proven, um, you know, the that they could tap the kids back. Right. Uh, given the circumstances that are are still here, um, and if I may fall back on something else that was said at the end of that clip, you know, we've said this time and time again on Duty Ron. Uh, listen, you, you, I I understand and respect the true crime family, but folks, if you know anybody that is traveling to these locations and harassing these people, tell them to stop. They are not helping the case. They're taking the focus away from where it needs to be and making these pick people into victims. Don't do that. Okay. And they're no. also utilizing the the jagaloonish behavior of these people and they're using it to their advantage because they're saying, look, look at me. I'm being harassed. Exactly. And and they're taking law enforcement away from what they need to be doing. Correct. You know, because we see uh, Sheriff Lawson, we see uh, a, a TBI allude to it that all of the online harassment, the people showing up, the trespassing and the so forth going on to people's properties. It's not a good thing. Dave Rader, EquiSearch Midwest director. I'm going to have him come in because I want to talk to Dave about what his organization has done thus far. And they've done a lot to search for some of Wells. Um, but, you know, Dave knows about this stuff because he's covered so many high profile cases. Um, Dave and Twyla and his team 
have searched for the missing in several different countries, Aruba, um, South America. They, they've been all over the place. I have the list, but I don't have it in front of me. So welcome Dave Rader into the stream, EquiSearch Midwest Director. Dave, always a pleasure, my brother. I appreciate it. We got our apparel on tonight. We're looking yeah. spiffy. We're looking We're spiffy. We're representing Dave two years and two weeks with Summer Wells. I know this was something that you lost quite a bit of sleep over. You, and, and you could correct me and stop me if I'm wrong, but I know this from being friends with you and talking with you on a regular basis. Your heart and soul was into finding Summer Wells and finding her and bringing her home. And I know that you searched for her vigorously with your teams. You want to just talk a little bit about the people who are following this with good intentions about what EquiSearch uh, Midwest did, and then we'll bring Twyla in. You know, again, I, I appreciate it um, for being back on. Uh, it's always good to see you and, and Ed, of course. Um, you know, we did spend a lot of time down uh, looking for, for summer. I mean, it was, it was nonstop. And, I mean, from the, even before we even hit the ground, we were already plotting on places that looked, um, it looked feasible for us to, to do. And, you know, when we got down there, we were under the, the guidance of, of somebody else. We were brought in as a resource. And then there was a couple other times that we, um, that we went down there that we, um, you know, that we had full, full power as far as to go where we thought that, that she may have been uh, placed or, or put into. Um, Again, we used, um, I, I can't even tell you, how, you know, from day one, um, how, how many people and how many different teams from all over the country came in there to, to, to help out for this little girl. And, you know, then we, um, you know, we didn't stop there. We, we brought, we actually flew in Gene Robinson um, to bring his technology on board and, and cover a little bit more ground plus two. And for those actually, who are listening, Dave, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Gene Robinson is the search is the drone uh, guru, right? He is yes. uh, he is our our man. Um, I mean, I, I know Ed Wallace and and Gene have been on our shows together, and they both have <laughs> quite a bit of tech. You know, they have a lot of um, knowledge when it comes to searching with drones. But Ed, um, also when we were talking, Ed was just like. Gene is just out of this world. He's got an unbelievable knowledge and skill set when it comes to operating drones and looking and searching for the missing, searching for little particles of clothing. He made a demonstration with us one night where he was talking about that little bit of color in one of those images that you look through with the locate program. And thanks to that uh, fine gentleman uh, who's, who, who, has this program and allows you guys to use it. He's a wonderful person. So uh, again, I wanted the people who are listening, you know, they might just hear Gene and, and say, who, who, who's this guy? So right. just give a little bit on that. Um, sure. Twyla and her group, uh, you know, I have so much footage that I want to play here and show everybody. We're scouring through the bushes and the brush in Tennessee dangers of black bear snakes and so forth you want to just talk a little bit about those uh what you guys had up against you when you came in there in june or july i believe it was when you came in um i'll tell you that that terrain was absolutely unforgiving i, I mean not only was it a mountain but again you you had the black bears to contend with you had the snakes um you know you had all kinds of different wildlife that you were contending with um, while you're trying to stay focused on, on trying to find uh, something as small as, as summer was. So um, it, it's, you know, everything that was thrown at us, again, we, we conquered it. Nobody, uh, nobody complained about anything. You know, at the end of the day, we were tired. Um, the heat was, um, I think it was in the upper 90s, and I think it was into the triple digits as far as with the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the humidity factor. Uh, the, the real feel and, and, and it was just there was a lot to this a uh, lot of moving a lot of moving pieces and, and, and we covered a, a boatload of ground unfortunately we did we just didn't come up with the right the right piece yeah absolutely Ed you have any uh, anything for Dave in regards to that I mean you've been here with almost with all of this you've been here since the no, beginning they they, uh, they gave a, a her alert a Herculean effort. Uh, to find uh, this young lady 
And despite the obstacles that were put in their um, path initially, okay, yeah. uh, and then uh, afterwards, um, going back and back time and time again, drones and so forth, uh, when the foliage was up, when the foliage was down, all of these things, um, you, you, you know, doing God's work out there, great bunch of people, all volunteers, um, you know, not getting paid for this, yeah. uh, you know. Mothers, fathers, uh, you know, school, you know, people who have got jobs, putting everything aside and coming down. Um, I, I, I want to just say this for for the folks who are in the chat. We love the live interactive chat. We love and appreciate your support. Um, hold your questions to towards the end of this. In the last fifteen minutes, you're going to do hashtag Dave, hashtag Twyla, hashtag Ed, hashtag Duty Ron, whoever you want to direct your question to. Just a hashtag that person's name. Uh, and then we will get to you guys in the last 15 minutes, I promise. So hang around. we got a lot of ground to cover. Joining us now is the search coordinator, the drone extraordinaire, the recovering from surgery, Twyla Cisco, coming in from, where is that, Alabama, Arkansas? I never know where you are, Twyla. How are you? Great. How are you all? Doing great. Doing great. It's a pleasure to have you. I don't you even here. know where I'm at, but I'm somewhere. You're, you're there. You're, you're in one of the Hollywood squares. Twyla, where, as it pertains to, um, whoops, Dave just bounced himself out and put himself back in. Uh, mm -hmm. As it pertains, or that might have been uh, Ed, as it pertains to Summer Wells, I want to see, <laughs> it's like, not me. I, I want to just get your take on, uh, you know, this is two years and two weeks. You guys made multiple trips to, you know, Hawkins County and searched. You, you worked alongside, um, I believe, the lead detective at one point as well, John Pruitt, uh, quite a few of the folks from Search and Rescue uh, Squad. So just could you give like the audience just a little bit of what you guys were up against? Dave touched on the bears and you showed us so many little videos and stuff of some of the terrain you were searching through. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, when we first went in for summer, it was it was in the beginning, and we were under TBI's direction. Um, and I know when I got there, it was strictly law enforcement, search and rescue teams. At that time, it was uh, rescue teams. We were the only uh, search and recovery team that was there. Um, it was very hot. It was very thick. And I remember rolling in there and I was thinking, oh, my word, th this is insane. I think there in Rocky Top is the worst terrain that I have ever been on through my journey with EquiSearch. And then you got this little bitty child out here somewhere and we're searching and there's ticks, there's snakes, there's spiders and it's hot. And when we first went in there, you know, we were under the tbi direction and then after a few days they let us go and do some reconning of some areas and we turned those in of areas that we thought from our experience um that needed to be searched and um it, it was a lot that to be honest with you other than baby joe uh clyde daniels in dixon tennessee that was my first uh actual search for a child and having kids myself it, it was very hard uh, we went there in the beginning and then they trusted us to come back on our own a few times. We went back a few times and we did see bear bears. There was one time that we went back in the area that we were in. It was, it was so trashy and so disgusting that at the end of the day, when we were done, we actually was at a motel sitting outside debriefing and most of our members that was there for that particular search ended up getting really, really sick. Uh, Dave got sick. I got sick. There was several others that had got sick, but uh, I, I still can't wrap my mind around it. It doesn't seem like it's been two years. It seems like it was yesterday. And I sit sometimes and I ask myself, what could have happened to this little girl? You know, my daughter, she's nine, and sometimes she wears clothes that I've seen in summer wearing in her pictures. And I can't wrap my mind around it. And, and we talk about Summer's case often. Me and Dave talk about it. And when we see something, you know, Trevor, he's the, he's the shining star here. Trevor Lee is because he's out there. He's in the area. And he, he's not ever going to make – he's going to make sure that nobody ever forgets Summer. 
he did something the other day. Um, so I think he's the shining star when it comes to summer. And I feel like she's findable. We just got to find that right spot. And whoever did hurt summer or did this to summer, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a secret for long because somebody can't go missing without somebody knowing, especially a child. Um, but I think that's all the cases that we work are hard, but I think this, th that one with summer, it's really hard because, you know, there was a bunch of bull crap that had happened back in the beginning. But I tell you what, even, even with that and, you know, me and Dave and several other teammates behind the steam was struggling because of a bunch of, bull crap because we went out there and did what we did and i guess it was intimidating to others um i guess the bottom line is is we're not going to give up on summer um and if they called us today we'd be out there tomorrow we'd dave probably pack up and leave tonight and go out there um but i will tell you that we are on the um call out list for the first responders up there when when they have somebody go missing and recently there was a little boy that went missing. Thank goodness he was found. He was okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I had contact with one of the detectives and TBI on that one. They did put us on standby for it. And luckily he was found and he was okay. Um, but we're never going to give up on summer. And as soon as we get that call saying, Hey, come back, we're, we're going to be on our way out there to do whatever we can cover more ground. Sorry. Somebody's driving by here. It's no. okay. It's okay, Twilight. You can you can mute it if you want. Uh, you took the you took the next question right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you when you were done, um, if um, you know Hawkins County and the TBI or any of the agencies that are on this case, including the FBI, if they asked EquiSearch Midwest to come on down, uh, Dave, uh, what what would be your response and and how would you tackle another search for Summer Wells without going into details? Um, again, uh, nothing would change as far as, you know, I would be, uh, just like Twyla said, I would, I would be packing my bags as we go. Um, I would have mapping started. I would have CalTOPO started again. Um, it's, um, you know, we're ready and prepared. So anytime that we get that phone call, um, to go anywhere, that's what we do. We have contingency plans in place to, you know, whenever we get a, a phone call, um, we have certain people that does certain things and we get the ball rolling as fast as we can, because timing is, uh, again, in, in a missing person's case, timing is everything. Right. You know, and that's what I was going to tell ask you where she's not at. We know right. where she isn't at. Yep. And another thing I was going to ask, and I know Ed probably has this in his thought process as well. Like, do you guys keep, um, you know, obviously all of the records of everything that, as an organization internally, all of your searches that you've com completed and all of the things. And I know that you always talk about Dave going back over because there's always sometimes in situations like this, there's always an opportunity and a chance for someone to remove remains and move them to another location. So that's why I kind of asked you, do you start from, you know, you start from square one and go start all over again, or do you continue from where you left off? And that's like kind of, I guess maybe a hard question to answer, but it, it is kind of difficult only for the simple reason that it, it, again, that would have to go on if law enforcement comes up and says, you know, this person um, is now a, a suspect or a player in the game. Then at that point in time, then, you know, if they were on any of these searches or if they had access to um, where anybody looked, then at that point in time, then you have to, start to go back over what that individual is, um, what was he familiar with? Right. So you, you kind of have to do both. You have to kind of expand the circle. I mean, we keep everything close to the vest with our Cal Topo. We don't share maps with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so we kind of feel on our end of it, nobody really knows unless they're keeping an eye on us and then keeping a mental note. But um, it, it, would, it would almost have to be through uh, law enforcement, uh, but nine times out of 10, we would expand the, uh, the grid. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what he's saying there is hundred percent correct. It would have to be Intel driven, right? You know, if law enforcement came up with some new intelligence or new players in the game, and that would help direct uh, Dave and Twyla and their teams on potentially where to go or to revisit. I mean, look how many times the poor girl in new England was moved 
as right. a dead as a corpse. Harmony Montgomery. Yep. Ha- Harmony was moved so many different places, yeah. right? I, and you know, I, and that was mind boggling to me. The guy freaking took her her father Adam Montgomery took her to his work and put her in the meat locker or in the yeah. walk-in freezer, in uh, a shopping bag, in a canvas shopping bag. Mm. Okay, he just moved her from place to place to place. He didn't dispose of her yeah. until until later in the game. I mean, how many? It's re, it's unheard of. And it took us such a long time to get that information, right? It, it, it took him being collared, arrested, mm-hmm. getting close to getting up, going up to trial. Uh, this information was released just recently, right. and uh, she she was you know we had nothing, and that's the thing. What you talked about earlier, Ed, is about holding on to hope and law enforcement keeping things close to the best. We oh, know geez. that TBI and Hawkins County and FBI have taken social media, taken phones, to you know, all the all of the digital data. They looked at. They talked about looking at um, uh, video surveillance. But they're not telling us what the results of those things are. We're not hearing about Don and Ken's emails and text messages back and forth because they're not going to release that until something happens. And nor should they. Yeah. Exactly. I, I agree. So I agree. So that's the that's the difficult part for the people who don't understand why that gets done. They think well, it's secretive and they're being, they're being sketchy. Their law enforcement is doing this and doing that. And that's where things go askew. It just, people have to realize that they're not holding it back to be dishonest with you. They're holding it back to build the case. Right. They, they, we need to know things that only the bad guy would know. Correct. And we can't let the entire community know this so that we can judge the veracity of somebody's statement Right. With what and we I'll, know. And I'll take that another step, um, Ed. In, in, I was watching a program last night where they were using a, a program where they, um, y- you can do something to a car to tell you exactly what has, you know, where that car has traveled, what door was open, what time it, it stopped, what time the door was open. And to me, I still think that there's a lot of things that should be kept to the vest um, as far as technology wise. Uh, because it, the more that the law enforcement, you, you know, says that it's out there, uh, the bad guy's going to sit there and say, oh, well, I remember them saying that, so I can't use this. Th- does that make sense? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I just think that there should be things that um, that aren't shared with the general public. And it's and again, it's not it's not to be malicious. It, it's just that it, it helps. It, it would help solve cases. And. And not go so long in, in, in these things. Unfortunately, these cases like this, they do tend to take a long time. Like, look at the uh, look at the uh, our two um, boys out uh, in Bakersfield. How long was that case start to finish? Yeah, Orin and Orson West. It, yeah. it, it took a, a, almost a, just a little bit over two years. Um, right. So, uh, again, and everybody was in the same position all of the people who were following it were pissed off because there was nothing coming out there was no updates by bakersfield pd the last update we got from them was when they did that search at Casaloma apartments in that open field and that seemed like an eternity and then boom 365 days after they took on the case um march i believe it was march 1st that march 1st the next of the next year in 2022 bam jacqueline and trizel were l- locked up arrested for murder uh and delphi yeah, yeah and delphi yeah. as well uh i want to read a, a comment that i couldn't highlight it came in from jennifer noble she's been a platinum member for two plus years she says duty ron ed dave twyla and trevor thank you for everything you have done and continue to do to help find the missing jennifer You've been in, instrumental in uh, Orin and Orson West and Searing Classic with the Lamar digital billboards and, and, and everything that you've done. I, I, I can't thank you enough. And, and for everybody who has their best, the missing's best interest at heart, I thank you and all the people, the silent sentinels that are out there that do things behind the scenes without trying to get a pat on the back. It's, um, there's no better, um, there's no better thing. Dave's getting a call. Uh, Dave, he's getting a call. We got to remove him. He's getting a phone call. Uh, I think he just he he just clicked at the voicemail. All right. 
There's it's actually no, the, there's it, no, uh, it's actually a detective from Illinois. Can I can I excuse myself real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, take oh, care of business. Back in. Okay. All right. Let's remove. Hey, a, I, uh, I just I just want to add something. Case, that's a case that 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 one there that he's talking about. We're about to uh work that one this coming up week. But Duty Ron, you're right. There's no like how do you even fix your mind to um I don't know how to say this without pissing somebody off or pissing people off or it, having them use it to get use it against me. But how do you go in and know that there's somebody missing? Okay. How do you go in to do something? And at the. Uh Oh, Ed, go ahead with your thought. She'll come back. Something happened. Okay. To her. All right. No, no. What I was saying is you, uh, you and I, you know, we're, be we're behind the scenes and they're the boots on the ground and they're the ones that are out there doing doing the hard work. We're we're just there uh, in the background, um, supporting them. Absolutely, and you're right. They're doing boots on the ground, kicking the dirt, moving you know moving things around and and searching for these the, the missing. So uh, we're not set up to do that, but we're definitely set up to support them. We're using the platform to support EquiSearch. I'm going to make a donation on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron and our community to EquiSearch. So I'm gonna be sending Dave and Twyla a donation on behalf of everybody and every single super chat that comes in here tonight as well, we're gonna to send to EquiSearch Midwest because they do God's work. I, um, again, we did the fundraiser, Ed, you and I, we were on the air for four hours for them in 2021. And I think we we drummed up between fifteen dollars and $20,000 for them. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a great thing. And I want to do that again for them. Uh, but in, in the best interest of um, folks that are out there uh, that are missing, these guys are second to none. Lost is not alone. That's their mantra, and that's what they go go by. And 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 they really they mean business. Anytime I speak to them, they're getting phone calls. Like you know, if they call me during the day and just to chat, it it happens just like that. Dave will get a call. Twyla probably got a call and she got bounced off, uh, but they'll be back. Uh, as, I, Adele. as I say it, there's Twyla. She's back. Uh, Lori Shortlegs, thank you for the super chat, uh, super sticker. She sends in twenty bucks. That'll go straight to EquiSearch. Um, here, they're all starting to roll in now. Carol Z sends in a super sticker, tw uh, $10. Thank you. Uh, this is your friend and, and my friend as well. Where is that uh, uh, funding coming from, Ed? The czar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure where the, that, the, the, the nomination is. She's in New Zealand. New I Zealand. Oh, she's uh, okay. My my Kiwi friend. I'll there be there. Go. I'll be there in February. Uh, KNS sends in a twenty dollars super sticker as well. Twyla is back. Let's see what happened. To Twyla, what happened, my dear? I have no idea. Oh, all I know is I seen y'all spinning, and I had to X out and come right back in. But what I was saying is, I don't know if you would call it heartless people or what, but you cannot go into something uh, with the missing person and expect to get rewarded for it because it's not easy for one. And I'll tell you firsthand straight up that I'll cry. I cry with these mothers. I cry with these fathers. I cry with these families. And, and just to think that somebody could go in to a missing person situation uh, and then want to get praise for it or good credit for it or something like that. I, I can't wrap my mind around it. Yeah. It, it's, it's not, I don't it, know. It's an unfortunate know. part of humanity. You know, there's good and bad and everything. And uh, unfortunately, Twyla, you have people that do this. But let's stick to the positives here. Um, Super Chats are coming in. All the donations, we're going to fast forward and pay it forward to um, EquiSearch. Uh, there's your daughter, Jerrica. She's in here and she says, be careful, Mama, with your hand. <laughs> her, did I say that right? Be careful, Mama, with your hand. That's exact. That sounds just like her. There you go. Uh, so she's putting in Lost is Not Alone. I'm highlighting oh. her comments coming in. Uh, and thank you, uh, K Kachita, K Kachata uh, T. Thank you for the super sticker. Um, Twyla, I wanted to ask you this. And, and, you know, we talked about this once before. On your second or third trip, I, I believe it was the second trip down into the Beach Creek in Hawkins County to search for uh, Summer Wells. 
you and Dave and the team sat down with Candace and Don at a restaurant and ate. You broke bread with them. Now, I, because my take and my the way I view this thing is a lot different than the way you guys view it. You guys go in there. You're not trying to point fingers at anybody. You're trying to get as much information as you can to help you get the goal of finding the missing, right? So you're not going in there trying to shake the tree up. But what I wanted to ask you is, Twyla, what was having dinner with Candace and Don Wells like? Um, well, I, I'll be honest with you. I invited them to dinner. And we went into this restaurant. And while we were there, uh, we was not getting very nice looks. As a matter of fact, I sat at the table uh, by myself with Don and Candace and one somebody else that came with them. Um it was very uncomfortable, but I wasn't there uh, for anybody else's opinion. I was there for Summer Wells, mm -hmm. and I was going to treat them like human beings, regardless of what is going on, because I don't know. I don't know what happened to her. But until we do find out, you know, uh, we as a team and as humans have to treat people like humans. But sitting there having dinner with them, you know, Candace. Uh, and Don sat across from me at a booth and the, their lady friend sat beside me. Um, there was times that Candace broke down and she cried. You know, uh, I would reach across the table and, and, you know, grab her hand and try to comfort her. There was times that Don, you know, he did break down. And at one point, um, there was other tables that came clear and we ended up all sitting at the table together with the rest of the team and, uh, before we ate, Don asked, could we say a prayer? Uh, Don prayed and, you know, he had a short conversation with me, uh, with other things outside of Summer's case, uh, that I won't go into, but just sitting there and having dinner with them. They're, they're humans just like we are. Mm -hmm. And we were there to try to find their daughter. We treat them just like we treat any other, uh, missing persons family until, um, something comes to light that points the finger to them in that direction regardless of what we think or what our opinions is we still have to treat them like human and uh we have hearts but just in general sitting there and i mean after all the tables were after the tables were joined and we were all sitting together we were literally in the middle of this restaurant so all these people in the area came in and um some gave us awkward looks some came up and thanked us some came up and hugged candace and don and after dinner, uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. After dinner, we, um, I went outside for something and Candace came out right behind me. And I will tell you that she did hug my neck and she started crying. And she said, regardless of what anybody says, I just want to let y'all know that I am very grateful that y'all are here to try to help my daughter. And she grabbed her wrist like this because I had given her an EquiSearch bracelet earlier that day when we were at her house. And she said, every time I see this bracelet, I'm going to think of you. And she said, y'all are our angels. And then after that, she went on her, they went on their own separate ways. But in the beginning, um, I don't think one or the other was comfortable with coming and having dinner with us. But eventually they came. But I invited them because they're human just like we are. I can't judge them. I can't say anything bad. I'm there to look for their daughter. And, you know, sometimes in situations like this, you know, they've told me multiple things, multiple things. And, um, it was awkward at times, duty Ron, I'm not going to lie to you, but at the end of the day, they were humans and I had to do what was right for our organization. And that was treat them like human beings for that little girl. And, and also the getting to your, to meet the goal of where you were there. Is Absolutely. The we had a goal while we were there. Um, you know, no, when we first came in that day, Don came over to the park and he apologized to us and, he was thanking us and he was grateful. Uh, we went up to the house. He was very grateful that we were there. Uh, it was different, but we do have a goal. And, you know, I even talked to Candace after the fact. Um, I, I tried to be befriend with her after the fact and we'll still talk to her to this day because my goal and EquiSearch's goal, as well as you guys' goal and Trevor's goal and all these good people out here, we have one goal and that's finding Summer Wells and we'll do whatever it possibly takes to get to that goal. 
Thank you for that, uh, Twyla. And, and thank you for answering the question um, that was put forth to you there. Uh, Naomi, thank you for the $5 super sticker. I also want to say thank you to Nona uh, Tina, uh, supporting from upstate New York for the $10. Okie dokie 17, uh, okie dokie 7, sends it $100 towards your next successful search. Thank you for all that you do. It's a labor of love. Uh, thank you for your generosity, uh, okie dokie. Um, and I want to just get to some of the questions in the chat. Lady Cole says, I'm always hoping that they find Summer Wells. And listen, you know, finding Summer Wells doesn't look like bringing her home and everything's honky-dory and she's brought home. We want to bring her and give her a proper, um, you know, lay her to rest, give her a proper funeral. Um, and, and, and the bottom line is, is the hope that people hold on to and say, oh, she was abducted and she's still alive out there somewhere. That's not impossible, but it's very, very improbable that that is, is, is the case here. Um, so what we're looking to do is to bring her home and bring her remains and, and, and lay her rest. Um, and to get to that, it seems like it's, it's moving very slow and it's very frustrating. But as Ed said in the beginning, and as I said, these things take time. And to get to the legal step of actually placing someone under arrest for the death of another person, it takes a lot. This just doesn't happen overnight. Ed? Yeah, absolutely. We have to cross our uh, T's and dot our I's and get to um, a place where we reach a conclusion, whether it's probable cause that a crime was committed or, in fact, they didn't have anything to do with her disappearance. Right. Yeah. Um, let's get, we're at the, uh, 45 minute mark almost. So I want to start looking at the chat vet girl, RWB, who's a very big supporter of not just this case, but all of these cases of the missing. She says, hashtag duty, Ron, what were some of the differences in the searches? And this is directed at you, Twyla assistance and directions. Were they given by who were the, the assistance and directions given by in the, in the searches? Um, in the beginning, when we went in, when we very first went in, we were under TBI. So we assisted TBI for a kid. Uh-oh. And what then happened? each time after that, we went in. I think the second time we went in, um, I do know that uh, Hawkins, like you said, Detective Pruitt, awesome, awesome guy. He was there with us. It was actually on a weekend, I believe. And he was there with us, literally rode in the back of the truck with me and another teammate and was standing out in the scorching sun while uh, Gene Nim was out there flying the drones. I mean, he was right there with us every step of the way. Um, and then when we went back after that, a few times we went back with uh, permission uh, from Hawkins County, of course. We kept track of absolutely everything. We turned in everything. You know, there was... Uh, in the loop with every single thing that we done and knew where we were at every single step of the way. Um, there was one time we were out there, we were in an area, there was actually some officers that had showed up and, you know, secured the area for me and some of my other teammates to go back and check because it was just an awful area. Um, but I do know that when we first went in, we were in under TBI. I had originally reached out. I seen this case on, um, Facebook or something. And I reached out to Dave and I said, Oh my goodness, there's this little girl that's missing. I said, it's not really, I said, it's a, not really far from me, but it's a few hours. Can I make contact? He said, absolutely, go do it. So I did, and then that's when we were able to go in. Uh, a few hours later, we got the okay to go ahead and bring our team in. Dave was on the road and there the very next morning. But uh, the first time we went, we was with TBI. The second time we went in uh, was under Hawkins County, and each time after that, we had permission from Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. And I still feel to this day, you know, if I feel like, okay, I feel like there's some more areas that we need to – go check into, or if there's some uh, reliable tips out there, not some crazy crap that doesn't make no sense. And I feel like if we reached out to the detective that we worked with, with Hawkins County Sheriff's Office and say, hey, can we come put on another search for summer? I feel wholeheartedly, without a doubt, that he would say, come on in, come do what you got to do. He was, that was very grateful. That was very appreciative. And um, we covered a lot of ground. I can tell you that much. I want to bring Dave back in because he's he's back and he joined us. And Vet Girl RWB, um, she put in another thing. Uh, some of the biggest obstacles. Sorry, should have added that. Thank you, um, Dave. Welcome back. 
I know that it was the, either the second or third time. What happened? Uh oh. I don't know. I don't know what happened. He's yeah, there. He's there. He's back. Yeah, but I can't add when I add him. There's no picture. Uh, anyway, so I don't. Okay. I Dave. do know that he said that they were supposed to have storms. Okay. There he is. Yeah, yeah, Dave. So welcome uh, back. He, I don't know. He, he's kind of having a, maybe internet trouble. Um, but that second or third time, did you go three times or two? It was two times, Twyla. No, I think we went three times. Right. Maybe one of the times that you went, I was negotiating with Tony Allen. You were supposed to go. Yep. And you I were was, supposed you know, to go. Yes, COVID. Uh, there was the COVID bug. You guys were all spreading it amongst them, yourselves. And me and Bill Cannon were supposed to drive down there. I had it mapped out. It was 16 hours of a drive. And um, it just, the cards weren't right. I, I was, I wanted to go down there, but it was just really, really a touchy time. And a lot of things were going on. But I had negotiated with uh, Tony Allen. He said, and, and this was kind of odd because he said, you guys can come. We're not going to tell you not to come. But. You can't go on anybody's private property. You can't search anywhere where it's not public property. There was a lot of restrictions and a lot of um, there was a there was a lot of things that you guys could and couldn't do. Yeah. So there, it was like these rules. Do you can you talk about that? What 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 was going on with that? There was community unrest and people were complaining. There was it, it, what happened was is there was people that was going on to. Uh, private property and uh, they were harassing people. They were going on people's property, searching, claiming that they were with the search team when really and they wasn't. And um, they, they was just doing all kinds of crazy stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. So when we were supposed to go back like we did, there was a lot of restrictions, like you said, because of the people that don't know what they're doing, that was just out there for the fame like taking cameras and stuff, trying to record little things, making it like they found something that belonged to her. So yes, it was really hard. And there was at some point, you know, when we were out there, there was a lady that, you know, she saw me with this, this shirt on this yellow shirt on. And she looked at me and she said, are you one of the fake ones? And I was like, what? She's like one of the, you know, the fake claim to be search teams. And I was like, absolutely not. Like I had to literally, give this lady my card at a gas station for her to believe that I was who I was or whatever. And she, after she realized that I wasn't one of the fakes, like she called it, um, she was like, you're more than welcome to come over to my property and search at any time. Da, 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 da. So it, that's why there was a lot of restrictions on there because people got tired of people showing up on their property late at night and doing this and doing that. I mean, we don't even go in somebody's property late at night to try to search something. Um, we do everything with permission but it, it's hard like that. We get that with a lot of cases, Duty Ron. It's hard because mm -hmm. other people go in for the fame or the attention, and it, it makes it hard for us when we do go in with permission from law enforcement. And sometimes the property owners have just had enough. It's like, no, my property's been searched multiple times, and I don't want nobody else on it. Right, right. Dave, welcome back. Uh, I, don't, I don't know you're having problems. with. Usually it's Twyla, and Twyla's stealing the show tonight. So I know. I know. I'm sitting here thinking maybe I'm in the bunker tonight. She's a rock star, <laughs> and you're in Iraq somewhere getting a yeah. ISIS video. Um, Dave, you heard what I was saying about uh, Tony Allen. Remember that negotiation that we had gone through to get you guys to go back there? Um, and and what, like what Twyla was saying is there was – private property owners who were complaining to Hawkins County sheriffs that people were trespassing on their property. Uh, and that was one of the stipulations that Tony made me convey to you uh, is like he said, Hey, Ron, you know, they could come back here. We're not going to tell them not to, we're not asking them to come. That's what they said. And that's what really freaked me out is like at that point in time. And it was just at the one year ish uh, mark they were saying, we're not asking them to come back, but if they want to come, they can. And that's how much you guys wanted to, you, that you went. But he said, if they come, tell them they can't go on private property. And I don't know. Um, what was the reception, Dave, if you can or if you want to talk about it uh, that second time? It Was it the second or the third time? I think it was the second time that, the that we went down. So, I mean, you know, after you negotiated with – with um, with Pruitt and, and, you know, we were, we were fortunate enough to, to be able to be, you know, again, they didn't ask us to come back down, 
but we felt compelled that it, it had to be done. And there was nobody else moving on forward, like, you know, expanding that circle, you might say, is what we were talking about before. And that, that needed to be done. I mean, and again, um, you know, that's what we wanted to do, but we were going to do it the right way. Yeah. Uh, I think that we even put the, together like mapping and, and put in, and told them exactly where we were going to be uh, and what properties we were going to that we were interested in and, and, and what areas that we wanted to go on. Uh, and then after after Pruitt actually uh, met with us and, and he spent the whole damn day with us, um, I think that, you know, that set a, a different precedence as far as on what he was thinking about us is that we weren't like anybody else. And, you know, we were there to do a job and, and, and to assist and, and not try to hamper. Right. Dave, if I may ask you a question and, and Twyla, sure. you too. Uh, these properties that you're talking about, uh, were they easily discernible as to who was the owner of them? Or were there, I mean, we're not talking like suburbia, like Ohio, or maybe like the Staten Island where you have residential communities with houses right on top of each other, right? We're talking about large plots of land, correct? Correct. Yeah, these, these houses was uh, spread it out. I mean, right there where she lives is its own little community. Uh, but they're spread it out. I mean, there's one house that's on top of a hill, uh, very rough terrain. But we we have um, we have access and tools that we use uh, that provides us with who property owners are. Uh, law enforcement knows we use it. They think it's great. Uh, as a matter of fact, sometimes it helps them. Um, but when we use this tool, we're actually able to look at the, you know, specific area, see who owns the property. We give that information to law enforcement. Law enforcement then gets permission granted for us to go and do what we do on that property. Uh, but these houses are spread out, you know, they're, I don't know, it's like backwoods country stuff. Like I live in the country. Well, right now I'm in the city, but it's country too where I live. But this was like country 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 like right right you don't even have cell phone service country like when the tbi was there they had to bring in something mobile for people to have a uh, service on their on their cell phones twilight would a city slicker like me and ed stand out like a sore thumb oh one? like a freaking sore thumb like i can't i mean we could throw you some boots and a hat and stuff on but oh yeah, yeah they must definitely know i'm little... gonna give you an example of something so you know dave is up there in Ohio, and I am here from the South, so I don't stick out like a sore thumb, but I can tell you that a few months back, we were in Alabama working a case, and we were in a restaurant, and I'm telling you, we stuck out like, a, even myself stuck out like a sore thumb, it was so crazy, but yeah, you and Ed, come on down here, we're going to have to we, do like this to your hair, and me all and kinds hey, of stuff to make you fit in. Speak for, you, speak for Ron, Ron, speak for yourself. I, I, you know, I have friends down in the Texas Rangers, right? And uh, so I was down in Texas and, and I was telling them how I love Texas. He goes, well, we're going to have to country you up, boy, because you're too city slicker. So him and his wife, the Ranger and his wife took me to a country Western store, threw me in a, in a changing closet and, uh, you know, uh, and just started throwing clothes over the top. Try this on, try that on, try this on. And when I came out of there, I had the hat, I had the jeans that were pressed right down so sharp that you can cut somebody's skin with it. And, and the shirt and the, the belt with the buckle and the boots, I had everything, right? You can and have the on, but once you open your mouth up. Well, that's what he said. Now, just don't open your mouth, and nobody will ever know. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'd make y'all fit in somehow, because even when Dave comes south sometimes, like, the looks that he gets, it's like this. Like they know he's not from here, but we can make you. We can most definitely get you to fit in. We can Ed, get the you. Only, Ed, the only thing that you're going to need is a pair of bib overalls, a wife beater, a piece of straw hanging out of your mouth, or two picks. <laughs> wife beater and, 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 and a John Deere hat. You're yeah. you're you're all in. And this is what you and I will hear if we walk down there. <laughs> you know, but, but I will tell you one thing: the people in the South, there's nothing like them. I mean, they they will literally give you the wife beater off their back. I mean, they are some genuinely good-hearted people. Yep. Knock on wood, duty run with every single case that I've ever had out here in the South. Never, ever have I had any problems whatsoever. And you know, some of our teammates from the North come down here, and they're like, "Wow." You know, it's it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game out here. Y'all have got to come out here. We I'm trying to find a photo. 
You are going to make it down. Ed's looking for photos. Uh, Heidi Cakes is in Knoxville, Tennessee. And she says, thank you for fighting uh, uh, Kudzu. How right? are you, T? Extreme heat and dangerous wildlife to search for summer. You're doing God's work for sure. And Go Vols. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Go Vols. Um, there was a couple other super chats that came in. Suzette Brown. Uh, it's five dollars. Um, and, and again, Dave, when you were when you cut out, I, I had made the mention that all the super chats and I'll calculate it up as I always do when we do these shows. And we're going to send them on over to you. And, and we're going to send a donation from Crime Time with Duty Ron to Equisearch at the end of the show. Uh, it's a small way for us to say thank you for the hard work. And, and you know, just for. Uh, everyone that's listening and is going to watch the replay and, and that's, a, you know, a fan of EquiSearch and a fan of uh, Crime Time with Duty Run, Dave and Twyla never ask us for anything, ever, ever. They've never, ever, oh, my God, is that Ed? Well, hold on. It's Cowboy Wallace. Hold on. Oh, wow. Well. He definitely looks like a southerner there. Look. What are you? Yeah, oh, either, oh. That's a ten, either, either that's a 10-gallon hat or you got one small ass head. Dave, he looks like, in that picture, Dave, he looks like the uh, the DA that we met uh, here on that last case. Looks just like him. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, came, I just came back from Iraq when I uh, took that picture in um, in uh, Dallas. Could you put that picture up again, Ed, please? I want to play something with <laughs> that up. Hold on, everybody. What are you, people on drugs? No, no, no. Here, uh, let's get it full screen. Kiss me. You won't regret it. <laughs> Kiss me. You won't regret it. Um, all right, let's let's reel it back in. We're just trying to have a little bit of fun here. Uh, Dave, there was a, a video that I was going to play. Um, this was from the first time you guys went back down there. Uh, in, when, you, when The first time when you went down to um, Tennessee and Hawkins County, um, you talked about throwing the kitchen sink at this thing. And um, you say that often when we interview and talk uh, together, when we talk on these live streams. W what do you mean by throwing the kitchen sink at everything? For those of you who are in the chat that don't kind of get a, a grasp of, of that saying, just give a little bit of it. So so what I mean by that is, is that I've got some pretty neat things in my, in my toy box. And, and my thing is, is that, you know, if, if, you know, the things in my toy box, you know, we've used and, and we still haven't found what we're looking for and there's something else that we need to go and get, then that's what I mean by, you know, uh, I'll throw in the kitchen sink. I'll, I'll literally go to Lowe's and buy a kitchen sink and throw it in. So um, I mean, there's sometimes where we need to, you know, on a case that we had down in Alabama, um, you know, there was, you know, there was some debris that needed to be moved and and four or five people just wasn't, wasn't big enough to, to get that, that accomplished. And we were looking for bones at that point in time. So I, I asked and, and I said, Hey, what's the chances that we get, uh, we get a small mini excavator out here. And within a half hour, 45 minutes, I had a, uh, a mini excavator that um, that got the job done and, and cleared the area the proper way. So that's what I mean by if I don't have it, I'll, I'm going to throw it in the kitchen sink. I'll go get it. Right. And you, the resources that you have are tremendous. Uh, you got volunteers from across the United States. And you have some that are outside of the United States that have technology that uh, does not need to be hands-on right there on the scene. So you have people outside of the United States and Canada and various different locations that can add to the team. Uh, you know, they don't just search on foot. They search by land. They search by sea. And and Dave Rader, um, I, I'm going to say this about you and Twyla. You guys are always looking to network and expand with the trades. And that's what I love about you guys is that you're not afraid to partner up with another search group and that's why i talk all the time about uh the good people who have the hearts in the right place and are doing it for the right reasons there's so many talented people out there you know and and i talk about you know um people from all walks of the uh you know walks of life and from all over the uh united states and outside of the united states there's people that want to legit go out and search for the missing. And, and you know, we're stronger in numbers. We're stronger with, we have the resources. And, and I, Dave, I see you nodding your head and Twyla and, 
Ed, you went into the closet. You're worrying me over there. And, and I'm not saying you're back in the closet. You've never been. But you went into that closet behind you. Let me let me restate that. You went into the closet behind him for yes. something. What did you pull out of your toy box? I didn't pull anything out. Way easy there. Okay. Uh, I, went to, <laughs> I went to look for the cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find it. All right. Uh, all right, no, no worries. Um, I wanted to also uh, talk with Dave and Twyla just a little bit tonight about some of the things that they've done recently. And it's been a tremendously busy 2022 ending and 2023, the beginning. Um, Dave, you want me to start with Twyla or do you want me to start with you? Uh, you can go ahead and start with Twyla. That's fine. Okay, boss. Twyla, <laughs> let's talk about some of the cases and some of the missing that you have found in 2023. Um, uh, my, mo my most recent case, uh, that we made a recovery on, uh, me, um, myself, Dave, Linda, Tony and Danny, uh, the drone pilots, uh, I tell you what, I think, I feel like we have some of the, with Gene, of course, have some of the best drone pilots in the nation. Um, our drone guys. And Dave came down the first time for this case that we had. Uh, you did a show with this investigator that we worked a case for. Hi, Sean. Hi, right. Sean. We worked his case several years ago, and you had the detective on that case on your show with us one time. His name was Ron also. He referred us to uh, an investigator in Demopolis, Alabama. Some of the best people. Uh, the letter of recommendation is on our Facebook page that he gave us. So we got this case. I made contact with him. Dave was like, hey, we got a case here in Alabama. Da, 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 da. So I made contact with him. We scheduled, you know, a search. So Dave, Tony and Danny, our drone pilots, came on down to the south and we went out there and we worked this case. And, um, you know, the case was a little bit older, a year old, I believe. And uh, it was very hard. We didn't know at first where to start, but we was trying to gather our information. Well, with Ron's help and these detectives, and Demopolis, Alabama uh, Police Department. Oh, my goodness. I, I tell you what, that is by far the first case that I've had in a long time besides with Ron out here in the South that these duty Ron, this man invited us to his house for a home cooked meal the day that we were leaving town. His wow. wife and him cooked this home cooked meal and fed us out of his home before we left out of there. And this young man's name is Damon Gibson. Gibson, I'll never forget it. His uh, mom and dad, I cried with them. As a matter of fact, I messaged with his mom today. Uh, we did recover him. It was complicated. They made an arrest. Um, there was a lot of tears shed with it. Uh, we were able to bring him home and give his family just a little bit of closure. And, and it's really tough to talk about because these are these are humans like me and you and Dave and Ed. These are humans that go missing and they go missing by the hand of somebody that they've been friends with all their life, uh, a family member. If it's a child, you know, they go missing. Most of the time when somebody goes missing, it's somebody that knows them that has committed the crime. And it's sickening. And I don't want to say too much, but. But it was very, um, it was very heartbreaking, and I'm not gonna cry on here. I'm not gonna do it. But it's very heartbreaking to see these detectives and these uh, police officers that was out with us. These just what these wasn't people that was just wearing badges. These people were like me and you, and they were there with us from the time we started till the time we stopped. Anything that we needed, they were hand in hand with us side by side uh we still talk to them to this day um but that's my most recent uh i don't even like to recover call it recovery that's my most recent person that we brung home and it's it, it's bittersweet man like i said i just messaged with his mom today his um grandmother sends cards and notes and donations to our organization every month or so. And we don't know how to accept the, the thank you word. Like we don't know what to say when somebody says, thank you. That's why when y'all are telling us, thank you, we don't know what to say. We're speechless because I mean, what are you supposed to say? But that's my most recent one. And um, it was hard. It was very hard. We used dogs and then 
The second time we did a search, it was Linda, Dave, the two drone pilots, and myself went out here, and we was able to bring this bring this boy home. Well, I'm going to link this, um, you know, your the Facebook the, the the letter that was written by the city of Demopolis Police Department. It's a it's a two page letter, and they go on to talk about exactly what you did uh, in this investigation and and. It's it's a great read. I'm not going to read it out loud here, but uh, congratulations to you guys on um, these. When when we say all the time, you know, when you have these positives where, where you're bringing somebody home to a family, even though it is a sad thing, um, these are this is what you this is what you're out there for. You're out there to find the missing. Uh, and Dave, I know you're proud of Twyla and all of your team. All of the team. It's not just Twyla. It's Twyla and the team that goes out there, Linda and everybody included, um, they put their heart and soul into it. And that's what it takes. Ed knows about team because he worked in a team uh, atmosphere in the crime scene unit. It wasn't just him. It was him and his team uh, that would go out and work. These I feel like we have, well, I feel like, and I know there are other teams out there that that's great and everything. But from my experience, um, I feel like uh, our team that we have um, love them like, we're all family. As a matter of fact, we're all one big happy family, but I feel like we have a very, very, very amazing team and we all work together. Even if there's differences there, we put them to the side and we do what we're supposed to do as a team to try to bring the missing home. And uh, I feel like we got one of the best teams in the nation. That's all I'm saying. Dave? That's how I feel. Uh, I can't, I couldn't have said it um, any, any better than that. I mean, we, we have special people on this team. I mean, we, um, you know, everybody sits there and says, I'm the director. You know, it's just a word um, or I'm good at what I, what I do. I'm, I'm not good at what I do. It's just that I surround myself with the right people. That's what gets things done. That's how you, that's how you accomplish things is um, by the people that you surround yourself with. That's how you get things done. So, um, you know, we've been very, fortunate with the people that we've we've brought on board uh their their hearts are in the right spot yep. um you know the past three months it's been very crazy i mean we had a couple water searches i mean we had one was in a van ron helped us out with that we had a recovery within 24 hours we found this guy that was in the river uh in his van mm-hmm. um we uh you know i came back from florida and um we had a little seven-year-old that went missing uh, up in Dayton, Ohio, um, uh, Twyla was very instrumental, uh, Tony, and we started flying the banks. Uh, we started on that immediately. Unfortunately, um, you, you know, he, he, he surfaced about 10 to 12 days later. So it's, um, you know, and, and then we just had one the other day that we, we worked with Lebanon PD, uh, and, and we worked with them before on, a, on, a, on a case in, and fortunately, this lady was found, but she was uh, found two and a half hours away from where we were we were looking. But you know, again, we were we were running imagery, we were doing everything that we possibly can. And you know, the technology end of this seems to be where this is going. Right. Um, there's very few um, all-out foot searches that we've done lately and it's all been they, they've wanted they want the technology first and then we can back it up after that so um and then we've got one that's coming up uh, that was the detective from the uh, illinois state pd that um that i i had to step aside for a minute um that we're leaving for for next friday um so you know we're being requested out in uh, out in illinois so we're going to take the drone team uh we're going to look and and see what we have for them. I, I, I've got a map of it, but you know, you really don't know what you have until you will physically lay eyes on it right. and then we'll get a game plan for that. So uh, very busy, uh, of course, I wish we didn't, you know, didn't have to take this, the phone calls that we do, but you right. know, um, it's a necessary evil. And your phone rings night and day. I know that for a fact, because I could talk to you at 12 midnight or I could talk to you in the middle of the day or early in the morning you get in phone calls and Twyla at times, as much as she loves me, she tells me duty Ron, I got to go. I got to take this call. Yeah. I don't take any offense by it because I know that she's doing, she's working, she's working and doing her job. Um, I want to just say this for the folks in the chat. Uh, this live stream is not about 
if Don and Candace are guilty of uh, their daughters going missing, we're not doing that here. We're talking to uh, EquiSearch Midwest and we're asking them about what they did on the search and if they would come back. And we got the answers. So if you want to hear what they have to say, watch the replay or scroll back to the beginning. We we speak about this in, throughout this whole live stream. EquiSearch and their team would gladly go back to Hawkins County to search for Summer Wells. Um, if they if they got the call to come, they would leave tomorrow. So that's that's where we're at with this. Uh, Summer Wells, it's a sad, sad situation because how many five-year-olds just vanish off the face of the earth? They don't. And statistics don't lie. Um, the chances of her, uh, you know, being uh, snatched up off of that property in a, in, a, in a very short period of time, as the parents, as the mom describes, are very slim. It's slim to none that that happened. So um, it leaves us all with a lot of questions and it leaves us all with a lot of unanswered thoughts. Um, I could go to Ed and I can go to Dave and Twyla and ask them their thoughts, but it's exactly that, just their thoughts and opinions. And we're not here to do that. Um, again, I, I want people to hope and pray and support law enforcement on the state, local, and federal levels uh, support these volunteer, non-paid groups like EquiSearch Midwest that go out there and search for the uh, for the missing night and day. Anytime they'll take a phone call, they'll do what they have to do, and they put their lives on hold. Uh, look, Ed's going around and traveling the country. You know, it's, uh, granted, it's his business, but he has a choice where he could say, I don't want to do this, but he does want to educate um, other agencies you know, on you know, weapons of mass destruction, crime scene reconstruction, and, and all the things that he does. So um, it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you guys on here. An hour and 15 minutes, Jennifer Nobles is chiming in with upcoming West trial on 713. Is there a possibility that your organization will come back to Bakersfield to search for these boys. Now, remember, Sincere and Classic and Oren and Orson West, that's their birth name, Sincere and Classic. Um, Oren and Orson West is what they're known by legally. She's asking, is there any chance you will return to look for Bailey Despot from Bakersfield to Bakersfield 3? Dave, any thoughts on that? 100%. Again, if law enforcement needs our assistance or a piece of technology that we have in our hands, 100%. If, if there's a will, there's a way. That's a big yes, Jennifer. Um, but again, law enforcement's got to do the reach out. EquiSearch does not insert themselves into uh, searching uh, for the missing. They got to be invited by the investigative authorities. And, and Summerwells is not a, a closed case. They're still actively investigating it. So they would have to have a... Like, I'd have to either reach out to them and ask again if they can go back, or they would have to reach out to um, EquiSearch. And I'd be willing to call to, uh, Tony Allen again and just to say, hey, what's up? You know, how's it going? Uh, and if, if you give me the blessing on that, I would certainly do that um, after the holidays. You know, I don't think it's a bad idea to, to you know, just sit there and say, you know, to at least, you know, say, hey, you, you still have this resource at your hand, so don't don't think that you can't ever – make that phone call. There's a lot of times where law enforcement will sit there and literally, well, I don't want to bother you. Or I, I don't want you to do, you know, look, this is how things get done. Right. Um, you know, yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Hell, I, I lose track of time, mm -hmm. you know, on this lady that, that went missing. I mean, while we were literally doing our thing and doing what we needed to do, law enforcement then didn't have to, to do any, searching they didn't have to worry about us they could concentrate on doing the investigation end of this to try to put us in the right direction and that's what happened yesterday when they had that free time to really do what they needed to do and what they're good at then that's how we found out that this lady was was fine and she was two and a half hours away but if you you can't have law enforcement in the woods and expect them to be you know going door to door and checking footage from cameras if there's just not enough of them to go around or the, or the dollars to do it. So, right. and, and I agree with that uh, before, uh, Ed, when, when you first started, um, 
on the comments, uh, just because you don't, people don't see it happening doesn't mean that it's not happening behind closed doors. I, I can guarantee you that TBI is still working angles. I can guarantee you that uh, Hawkins County is still working angles. But just because we don't see it, everybody thinks, oh, they're not doing a damn thing. Yeah, that's not that's not the truth. So I, I had to sit there and agree with that on that. Right. Ed, there's a couple other questions. Uh, uh, unsolved crimes uncovered. She put a couple of comments in. She also made a statement that she feels Candace and Don is not involved in the their daughters uh, going missing. Uh, she's asking, did EquiSearch search any abandoned homes or hunting cabins while you guys are out there? Twyla? We did. We searched abandons. We searched sheds. We searched garbage cans. We searched dumping grounds. Uh, we searched property where people would go and dump their trash. Um, we've searched high and low. Trust me, we've looked up in trees. We've looked down. We've looked in holes. We've looked in anything you could possibly think of. We've looked in it. Let me just play this because I, th I I think a lot of people want to see this. Just just two minutes, so bear with me, guys, and then we'll wrap it up. I know we all got to get on with our lives tonight, and it's Fourth of July weekend. So um, let me just um, let me just play this little piece because this is uh, the latest of what uh, Don Wells had to say about search for his daughter. So let's play this. Years ago to find Summer Wells is still active. Good evening, I'm Sarah Diamond. I'm Josh Smith. Despite nationwide attention received by her disappearance, there are still no answers as to what happened to the little girl. The most significant recent development came yesterday when an age progressed image was released showing what Summer could look like now at the age of seven. That's the photo on the... What's your guys' thoughts on this? I'm not going to put you all back on. I'll go with you, Twyla. Do you think that this is um, – people argue and say that she looks 12 or 13 years old there. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think that picture looks uh, – is the looks of a child that's just a little bit older. And it looks like Candace to me a little bit. I don't and know. It, it definitely doesn't look like a smaller child. That's just my opinion. I'm not talking bad about it or nothing like that. I'm just saying that it looks like an older child to me. Ed? I concur, Dave. I, I'm just, I'm not sure if age progression helps or if it hurts. I think to, to me, in some cases, I think it hurts, and I think it would hurt in this case. I'm going to get our forensic artist um, back on, and I'm going to ask him about this. So I'm going to reach out to him after the holiday is over, July 5th, um, and his name is Steve Mancusi. Dave, um, Dave, Ed, do you know him? He was a forensic yes. artist with the NYPD. I had him on. Uh, mm -hmm. twice with me so i'm going to ask uh, mancusi to take a peek at this uh he's what do you guys what do you guys think ed and ron i, I mean do you think that age progression helps or hurts you know when it's when like right now you see that twyla and i are saying that it, she looks like a tween she looks too old uh it doesn't look like an eight-year-old here so in that mm -hmm. case it would hurt right right and, and, and i and I had the information from Mancusi uh, in regards to Sincere and Classic or in Austin West. And he said that you, it's hard to do that age progression when they're very young, uh, four or five. He said when they get to the seven year um, mark, which is where we're at here with summer, he said that's then and only then is when they can really start to do um, an age progression. So I'm going to ask him uh, a little bit more about it. But let's listen to what Don has to say here. The left of your screen. Summer was five when she disappeared. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation says there are no new details they can publicly release. But we have team coverage tonight. Clarice Shaley is at a vigil to help uh, find Summer and honor other missing people. But first, we'll go to Ansley Daniel, who spoke with Don Wells, Summer's father. Ansley, you've been tracking this case from the start. Yeah, Josh and Sarah, here we are two years later, still trying to find out what happened to Summer. And tonight, her father is seeking some answers of his own. I'm just having to put my faith completely into, in God and know that he has a better plan. And, uh, and that's pretty much where I'm at. My wife is still struggling. A lot has changed for the Wells family over the last two years since their daughter Summer went missing from their Beach Creek home in Hawkins County. Social media have, have come out, you know, and protested at my job. 
um, everywhere we go. And uh, so it's hard for us to get any work or anything in eastern Tennessee. Wells says he and his wife Candace have been in Arkansas on and off for the last few months where he's been working in construction. He also says they've been working with the Department of Children's Services there to get their three older sons back. They've been in Tennessee DCS custody since the month after Summer was reported missing. I think they're scared to, of, our, of our house because of what happened. And, uh, it's one of the problem, one of the issues. You know? So we would like to buy another house here in Arkansas. The house he's referring to on Ben Hill Road is where his daughter went missing from. We couldn't understand what happened to Summer. The police couldn't understand and they were questioning us. They were at times they were hard on us, and other times they weren't. Uh, it just depended, depending on you know what police agency was there at the time. Two years later, he and Candace have no clues as to where Summer is. So we try to bounce things off of each other all the time. We might have talks about you know some of the drug activity that was going on at the time, and was going on right after her disappearance for quite a while. Um, but yeah, there's nothing new. Don says the family stays in touch with law enforcement through their private investigators. About two months ago, they talked to our private investigators, um, you know, and the FBI did, and they shared what they could with us. I mean, but they was just trying to come up with any new information or leads that they possibly could. and. So far, we just haven't been able to come up with anything. As two years pass with no new information publicly released, Dawn says the emotional toll is weighing on the family, especially Candace. She's been burnt by so many people that want to, you know, supposedly, you know, interview her or help and stuff, and then basically turn on her in every imaginable way. You know, she's she's been hurt deeply by these kind of things you know plus the thought of, you know we lost our daughter and you know our boys are in custody also with the cps he says they haven't been able to talk to their sons well at first we were allowed to talk to them and everything and then but well we haven't been able to talk to them for about six months no contact or anything like that and that's that's all we want to do is be able to tell them that we love them and we're rooting for them and we're working on, you know, things to get them back. Hope is hard to hold on to after all this time, but Don says he's clinging to faith. Whatever the outcome is, I have hope in God. And one day, either sooner or later, I will be with my daughter again. So that's all he had to say there. Uh, and, and I'm going to say, listen, here's my thoughts on why his boys aren't back with him. Again, we saw this in California with uh, the, uh, the boys, Orin and Orson West. If law enforcement can't come up with a valid reason why their young, the youngest daughter went missing and just vanished off the face of the earth, why would a judge or uh, in, in, in you know, family court say, Oh, I think it's a good idea to just let these people who lost their daughter and have no explanation for what happened to them to have a chance to losing two more kids. And, yeah. and how is that going to look? So we all have to understand that it's a liability issue for anybody in a, in a, in a place of authority to give those kids back to. And, and they're watching YouTube of Don all night long, drunk all over the Internet, Candace drunk all over the Internet. Uh, carrying on like complete morons. And I hate to say that, but that's what they do. They And, and Dave and Twyla, I'm, I'm not asking you guys to even get involved in this conversation, but what I'm saying is, is it's clear and evident that law enforcement is watching YouTube and they're watching what goes on. And Don and Candace have made complete and utter fools of themselves in response to after their, their child has gone and vanished. So they have put onto themselves this whole issue and this whole circumstance that they're in by their own actions. Ed? Yeah, I agree with you, but I, you know, I just want to go back to, to the interview that he just gave and his choice of words kind of jumped out at me. 
we've lost our daughter. That sign's kind of definitive to me. Instead of our daughter is missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We lost our daughter. Okay. Um, maybe he's inarticulate. But I think he may have said something that I find suspicious now. Instead of saying, our daughter is still missing. She's still out there somewhere. We lost our daughter. Yeah. I mean, my, and how can you move? How can you move on from that? I mean, you know, to go to, you know, I can see maybe going to the next town or something, but to sit there and change states while your daughter is still missing. Yeah. What, what sense does that make? Yeah. I mean, we, we could sit and pick this thing apart and, you know, look at it, but Ed, that was a great catch right there. And I only listened to it. This was the, that was the second time. And as I was listening to it, the, I still, you know, again, I feel that all of the actions of Don Wells and Candace Wells, uh, you know, post Summer Wells going missing are in part some of the main reasons why they did not and will not ever get those boys back because they carry on and get drunk and fight and curse and, and, and acting like a fool. I point to the Jagaloon sign uh, and put themselves out there. I mean, I don't know any people that if their daughter, a five-year-old daughter, goes missing, that they wouldn't be standing on the top, the highest rooftop with a bullhorn, screaming her name and looking and searching for her night and day. Okay? Um, I would, you would have to put me in a straitjacket if one of my children went missing. And I would never, ever stop until we found him or her. And and that, that's, the, that's the crazy part about this, is that everybody is saying, oh, everyone's picking on Don and Kansas. Everybody's, you know, no, they're picking on themselves. They're given the ammo by their actions, the way they're acting. All right, I didn't want to get into this part of it, but I did. Um, I want to thank you, Dave and Twyla, for everything that you do. I know you guys searched high and low and to the best of your ability while you were there. I know that you will go back and you continue to do, as we say, God's work. Um I, I, I don't think that there's anything more that we could say here because we covered all the grounds uh, uh, on, on this. And this case continues to be ongoing. It's not a cold case, still an active case. And they're asking, if you have any information, call 1-800-TBI-FINE. I'll link that in the description. I'll link uh, a, a, a link to the Hawkins County Sheriff's line. But 1-800-TBI-FINE, I think, with any viable um, you know, tips or, or anything will help, you know? So Twyla, Dave, thank you for joining Ed. Um, as always, I appreciate your time hour and 30 minutes. We didn't want to go over an hour and here we are an hour and a half. Um, and, and again, I mean, I want everyone to understand is that if you have, if you want to help, don't start, you know, trying to insert yourself into areas where you shouldn't be insert yourself. Um, Help out and do the best that you can from afar. And if you're there in that local community, you know, handing out flyers and, and talking about summer, it's a great thing. But don't start trespassing and going on to people's private property. It's not cool. Mm. <sighs> All right, guys, let's end it on the cop team. I didn't get it to change because you know why. <laughs> Kara, Oscar, and Popeye, Dave, Twyla, we love you. We'll see you guys soon, and thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work, guys. Appreciate you. Hey, thank folks, you. stay safe, stay prepared, watch your six. Yes, and as I always like to say, but I'm going to stop saying it, I'm going to say if you want to do something good, send a donation over to EquiSearch Midwest. They're a nonprofit. I have all their information linked in the description. We're going to be sending them a donation at the end of this the show on behalf of everybody who can't dig into their pocketbooks or their wallets just by watching the videos giving it a thumbs up sharing putting it onto social media you get the word out there support the groups who search for the missing good night from new york and we'll see you soon peace and love from crime time with duty ron bye guys